I am Ian Chilcott, and this is Don't Get Him Started. Oh, yeah, just, I, I mean, all I want to say is it's a load of bollocks. Have I throttled that one enough? <laughs> one of the most ridiculous things I think I've ever heard. Uh, at least it gives you an excuse for not catching. You don't have to look at yourself. With this video comes a disclaimer, something that hopefully keeps me out of jail. The views and opinion expressed in this video are the views of myself, Ian Chilly Chilcott, and do not represent the views or opinions of Fox International. The video is not aimed to offend or discredit any person or company. Remember guys, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, but this one is mine. For someone to suggest that the Ronnie rig um, has raised the bar on rig invention, rig mechanics, or it catches more carp is probably one of the most ridiculous things I think I've ever heard. I described it once in print um, uh, with a capital letter on, on, at the start of each word, a rip-off not needing industrial endeavour, and I still stick to that. It was a, a, a very, very poor rip-off of Dave Lane's invention, the 360 rig. And uh, I was fishing with Dave a lot around the time he came up with this, and I put my hand on my heart, and I'll tell you, I had absolutely nothing to do with this invention. It all came from uh, Dave's amazing carp orientated brain. Uh, the 360 rig um, took things to a new level um, and it caused some angst within the carp fishing world uh, through probably the, the world's worst emotion which is jealousy. A lot of people uh, in the industry at the time were very jealous of Dave's successes and uh, what a brilliant carp angler he was um, <clears throat> and they didn't like it. Uh, one fishery manager, one of the biggest in the country, decided to ban it completely from all their waters. And uh, that man and Dave uh, were, were not the best of friends. And there were a couple of other people that raised it and said it was an awful rig and it, it should be banned. Um, it's had a new lease of life. And the Ronnie rig incorporates some of the thinking of a 360 rig. But a 360 gives you that extra half a dimension. It's the way that it moves through the swivel, the way that it can pivot on itself without big, making big silly loops. It was a, a, an incredible rig. Uh, and to me, the, the, the 360 rig was, was, was an invention not equal to the, the hair rig, but one that changed my thoughts on rig mechanics. <clears throat> the Ronnie rig itself, and just looking at what it offers, it, it does absolutely nothing that, that any other rig uh, can do for you. Um, I mean, I've always said, and I still use, the original hair rig with, with a long hair, one of the, the best hooking devices, well, the best carp hooking device there's ever been. Uh, I don't use the massive long hairs they used back in the day, but you know, a separation of a, a centimeter or so from, the, from the, the bend of my hook. The Ronnie rig off, offers nothing. It just sits there, it presents a, a bait well. You can get it to sit down nicely without masking the hook. But other than that, it offers no more than any other rig. And um, I, I just, to me, you know, it becomes, when people make these things popular, everybody starts using them. So the, the, everybody thinks that on that lake, you know, the only rig you can use is a Ronnie rig. And I've been to, to loads of places where people tell me to use a certain thing and I use what I want to use and catch just the same amount of fish and sometimes more. Uh, it doesn't make me a better angler, it's just that I haven't mixed my mind up in fashion. Um, uh, and, and, you know, when you take on something like that that is completely useless, uh, at least it gives you an excuse for not catching. You don't have to look at yourself to find the answer.
hand sharpening hooks <clears throat> and um, the, the, the unbelievable thing that, that people think they'll catch you more carp. <clears throat> I've, I've, I've simply never ever believed it. Uh, I have never ever thought of sharpening a hook uh, and I never will. If I think my hook is blunt, I will get a new one out of the packet made by people who know what to do with a hook. Um, all, the, all the hooks that I have at my disposal are sharper th than a big bag of sharp things and, and they work. And if they get blunt, I change that hook. And um, I, I normally change a hook after every fish, if I'm honest, simply because I think that, that hook's, you know, it's done its job. Um, sharpening a hook, what you're doing is changing the mechanics of that hook straight away. And <clears throat> I've seen so much written about it. Um, that Once that hook is sharpened, that's it. it it's, you'll never ever be able to use it again. It is, it's just not usable again. You've exposed the metal, it will start to rust and it will start to corrode. What you make by filing it is an intensely sharp point that is very, very thin. And the slightest knock on, on a little bit of gravel or anything, and you've ruined what it's capable of doing. Um, I've seen so many people, you know, they, they've sharpened a hook to, to cast it out and blunted it and then start sharpening it again. And the point is like a couple of mils, you know, nearer the barb than it was originally and, and the hook has lo lost all purpose. It's not for me. Um, as I say, I, I don't make hooks. Uh, I don't have the knowledge to, to know how to how to sharpen them properly, uh, so I don't. And I do not think it's affected my fishing results one iota. And I do not believe that sharpening a hook like the way you're told to is going to increase your catch rate. Full stop. They don't take floaters on here. Uh, uh, probably one of the biggest red rags that anybody could wave at this ball. Uh, because I, 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 I just don't understand it. A lot of people, there are certain elements of carp fishing that some people don't seem to comprehend or understand. And that is no slight against an individual. Yeah, we all go carp fishing for, for different reasons. But in the main, you want to catch a carp. <clears throat> and one of the greatest ways of catching a carp is putting a hook bait where those fish are. <clears throat> zig rigs, a classic example. Uh, you've got a zig, uh, a, a zig set up that could explore the depths of the water. You can find out where those carp are around. I've done it many a time. <clears throat> Certainly on this very lake here, Willow Park. If you get a bite on a three foot zig, put the other two rods on it as well. And you continue to get bites at that depth. Um, if on a nice warm spring day, you turn up at the lake and all those carp are swimming around on the top, there is undoubtedly an opportunity of getting a bite. Um, I will use a very, very good example, and we've probably got some footage of the event uh, to hand. <clears throat> I was fishing a little syndicate lake up north of the M25, uh, and I called it Greenmire because it just resembled Redmire, a little triangular farm field all overgrown around it. And I was told by several people when I went there, the first time I fished it was at a charity event, that you, nobody ever caught a carp off the top. They just simply didn't take floaters there. Well, I went back the next time uh, with cameras from, from Fox. Uh, we were going to be doing some, some gear, some filming and stuff, and, and also what I was doing with my fishing. And I was so determined in between doing what I was doing, I kept on firing out some mixes into the middle of the lake and they dripped, drifted from the middle um, round, round to my right. And after about an hour of doing this, <coughs> thankfully there were no seagulls around uh, and I'll come back to those in a minute. Um, I can't came, I saw it come up, just, just sort of just swirled away from it. 
I stopped doing everything. I, I was certainly not going to do any filming. We had to take a tea break. Fired out some more and I got a couple just taking. The odd, just the odd mixer, not the ideal way of hooking them. You want to get them so they're doing that Pac-Man effect. But this was carp that have never been caught off the top in a lake that was fished by a small syndicate very, very regularly. It took another 90 minutes really, but eventually I found one small area, and it's probably about two meters square, where the carp would take these mixers very confidently as they drifted over. And I started firing out in PVA bags so that the, the, the mix of mixers would be tighter as it went over that spot and increased the amount they wanted it. And I presented a hook and the cameramen were, 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 were there that day, got the bite, everything, the carp coming up, taking the mixer and away it went. Uh, it's one of those sayings that I think just reflects the attitude of the people that are fishing the water. Um, it's, you know, it's, again, I'll, I'll use zigs as an example. People just, they'll throw out a zig for 20 minutes uh, and it doesn't go, so they reel it in. Uh, and, and they'll put the bottom baits back out and sit there watching the television in their bivy with the door down while, you know, for 24 hours and reel in in the morning. Uh, the only way you can catch a carp is to fish where the fish are and floaters are the way forward. You know, a day spent trying to catch a single carp off the top uh, is better than just sitting waiting for night time for, for maybe get a bite early in the morning off the bottom. Why not spend your time uh, looking at the lake and, and you see the population of the lake and you'll see the fish that you're looking for and when you get a bite your heart is in your mouth. It is truly the best way of getting a bite. But never ever tell me they don't take a mixer here because they will. <clears throat> There's another way <laughs> that some people look at this. And I remember a very famous lake um, in the Colne Valley where the, the guy who ran the lake never counted a carp that people caught when it was caught off the top. What an, a pathetic attitude to have when a guy has, he, he's angled in a much more um, a positive, what is what angling is all about, presenting a bait to a fish and, 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 and catching him that way. I cannot believe that people think they don't count. Um, probably one of the more pathetic things that you hear in carp fishing, but uh, it, it, it becomes fashionable in sometimes, and people say that all the time. Yeah, because they think that is what you're supposed to say, and I, I don't get it, I don't get it. A carp caught in any way, as long as it's a fair way, uh, it, it's, it, it's fishing, and they all count if you've done it the right way. I should have said something else on that, actually. Yeah, well, if, you know, car, a carp off the cop top doesn't count. <clears throat> I think it paints a very dull and uninteresting picture of the person that's saying it. Uh, you know, they lack the get up and go to be active. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's the thrill of the chase. It gives carp fishing another amazing edge. And like I said, it might take you all day to get the bite, but you've got a bite. Um, and and that, that's the thing. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, people that suggest it, are people that lack any get up and go. They're probably dull and very uninteresting people themselves and just, you know, like I say, sit in the bivvy watching the television and, uh, you know, your widescreen TV is the front of my brolly. That's what I watch when I'm fishing and that tells me I know where the car are and if they're on the top, I'm going to fish them, fish for them no matter what anybody says about the fact they don't get caught on off the top in that lake. Yeah, it's all a bit silly. I came to this water the other day and a guy said to me he'd caught an upper 20. And as soon as he said it, 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 it gets my hackles, <laughs> they come up. And I'm, I, 
People <coughs> try and exaggerate the weights of their fish by using this kind of thing. <coughs> Eventually, in the conversation, I found out that that fish weighed 25 and a half pounds, but it was an upper 20, made it sound bigger. And <coughs> so many people want to include a certain figure in the capture of a carp. They don't call a carp 29 pounds and 12 ounces. They call it a near 30, and it drives me absolutely nutty. Uh, <coughs> a near 40, even worse. It's simply because they want to use 30 or 40 in the conversation and not tell you the true weight of the fish. I've never ever neared it or midded it or loaded it. It is what it is. Whatever I catch, it's a 19 pound, 15 ounce common, or it's a 20 pound, two ounce mirror. <clears throat> 29 12 or 31 pound it's not i don't think you need to be accurate without trying to make things bigger than they actually are you know tell people the truth of what it weighed and it's all happy days and uh yeah it's one of those things that i've never known anything that annoys me so much so i guess now I'm just thinking a few days into the future, the next time I go fishing, and a lot of people have seen this, that everybody's gonna tell me they've caught an upper 20, or it was a near 30. <laughs> it just, you know, call a fish, say it, say it what it is, a spade to spade, a 20 pound, four ounce carp, you know, a, a, a 29, 12, a 39, 14. Uh, and I've had a few of those along the way. Um, to say it, it's a near 40 doesn't make it a 40 pounder. 40 pounds should never have been included in the description and not should, should a near 30. Uh, I've even heard, which is absolutely crazy, uh, people tell me that it was a near 20. And, and that it just leaves me gobsmacked that people try and they, what they're trying to do is increase the weight of the fish. Uh, and not tell you accurately wh what they call. Why it drives me so nutty, I don't know. I, but I think it's simply the fact that I have, <clears throat> whatever I've caught, weighs what it weighs, and I say what it weighs, and I don't necessarily want to throw 30 pounds or 40 pounds into the equation to make me any better than I am. And uh, I'm not that good in the first place, and uh, yeah, better to be lucky than good.